Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 560, that's 560 of the Agostino Zynga show. I hope you are doing well wherever this show may find you. Wow, here I am back again, looking fresh, looking clean. I'm not sure if you can pick it up if you're again, if you're listening via the audio, you won't care about this, but if you're watching this video, can you tell I haven't moisturized my skin? Can you tell I haven't moisturized my face specifically? Skin, you know, skin everywhere. But can you tell this face is drier than the bottom of the soles of my feet? Can you tell? I don't know. I, I think most people can't tell because like I say in previous shows, I'm a very oily, um, sweaty kind of guy. I tend to kind of, you know, I'm the kind of guy, dip, didn't matter when I was skinny, when I'm fat now, like it doesn't matter. Don't, don't think it's a weight thing. I'm the kind of guy where if I run up a couple of stairs, I'm not going to be tired, but you can definitely tell I run up some stairs. <laughs> you know what I mean? My face is going to be leaking. It's going to be perspirating. It's going to be shooting out, flipping beads of absolute sweat. And, you know, when when I sweat, I sweat real good. You know, I've definitely done some sort of um physical movement that will get me to raise up my body temperature. It always happens. It, that's just a thing. It's just what it is. So I always think to myself, like, maybe I, that's why I had this really weird battle when it comes to, like, you know, moisturizer. Do I get cocoa butter that's thick that I prefer? That's a little bit more, um, which I think has more of a scent to it. Do I get stuff that's a little bit more water-based, but doesn't feel like you put anything on and you've got to layer it a couple of times before you actually feel like you've got anything on or do you just raw dog it and just shower and just head out and just hope no one notices that your face isn't as um, moisturized as it should be. I don't know. And again, it's, it's not really a people noticing thing. It's more so internal. You're meant to be looking after your skin and making sure it's in good health. I know that, but you know life's an image thing you want to make sure that you look um put together and somewhat uh looked after when you do head outside but yeah if you can tell that i don't have moisturizer on let me know in the comments down below and if you can't tell that probably means you need to put some damn moisturizer on your bloody face okay stop looking at me look at yourself even though you know i want you to stay looking at me because i'm doing this podcast so don't leave don't leave and don't not look at me anyway let's move let's carry on um hope you are well i am pretty decent i've done so many things over the last couple of days that i went to mention quickly um finally got my pictures developed so i've been taking photos for the best part of what 10 plus years seen stuff my travels documenting things i had many different projects i was going to do in terms of being a club photographer which i'm probably going to jump back on again now that i've got my bike which i'm going to talk about again later as well um that's going pretty well so um i've got many many roles of film that i've never really got done and got sorted or developed because i just haven't had the time and then at the time that i did have the time i didn't have the money because i was in between jobs and when i did get a job i then got lazy you know just the standard stuff but anyway i finally got around to doing it the other day i went to the photo developing place near where i live not not really near where i live but you know it's the closest one that can basically does the thing that i need to do and i was able to get everything developed it cost a fortune to get done way more than i was expecting it to cost but regardless i got it done i got out of the way i'm a big believer in making sure you get all your big purchases out of the way before you know especially when you get paid before you do anything else just get all the purchases that you actually need you know not the frivolous things and then by the time the end of the month comes you might be a bit more tight first when you buy it, be more tight for cash you still got the stuff that you actually need to get whether it's a jacket a new laptop whatever just try and bang it out when you, when that payment first drops i did that banged that out got that out of the way happy should have those pictures sent to me sometime this week and the plan with that would be either to see what's there organize it into some sort of zine which i'm going to sell and going to put up available on my store which i'm going to start setting up soon on my site so if you want to check out some of that stuff from you know photography that i do usually kind of sceney um type of like nightlife type of photography um uh, in general, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, then definitely check out my website, agassinozingo.com. Under the photography section, I'll be uploading some pictures I won't be using for the zine on there. And then other selects that I'll take from 
that group of pictures I've got developed, I put into a zine and I'll sell them on my site. And if there's any interest for particular prints, I'll put those up available as well and start moving into doing those kind of things that I've kind of been wanting to do for the longest time. You know, I'm the biggest procrastinator I know. I've got loads of really great ideas. Um, I think I'm incredibly creative. I do think I'm incredibly awesome. As my bio says on my Instagram and my Twitter, I think I'm a creative genius, but you can't think you're a creative genius without showing your creative genius. And if there's one thing we've all kind of learned from that Kanye West documentary that everyone's watched and talked about, which I was supposed to talk about one time as well, is that apart from being, you know, his own biggest fan, he did show and prove too. Let's not deny that, right? I think everyone kind of watches those documentaries and usually takes away the kind of cliff note, sort of like overlining kind of themes. But in general, the whole reason why Kanye West was able to believe in himself so much because he actually did the work, right? He was actually able to make really good songs, you know, um, produce really great tracks and then listen back to him and think, okay, cool, if just somebody will give me a chance, I'm going to be able to burst. I'm going to be able to blow. I'm going to be able to become successful. But you can't have that level of confidence without actually doing the work. So in an effort to do the work and effort to put my best foot forward, and then again, as a, as a, um, as my own little private way to kind of honor the legacy of Virgil Abloh again, who I think somebody left a last, lasting legacy for always, always making sure he produced and not, you know, just thought about things or pontificated, which I always hated anyway in myself for doing that too often. Be the kind of guy, you know, because I razz on it a lot, but I did it myself. I'll, I'll be the guy that would be, you know, I'd have it's still my hard drive now. I have line sheets of collections that I never put together. I have graphics of shirts I wanted to do, this, that idea, like loads of shit that never really got done. So um, in an effort to kind of honor Virgil's legacy, somebody again, who I think was the the heir apparent from Kanye's kind of like, you know, learning in real learning in real time, learning in front of people, doing it to the biggest extent. Um, I'm going to start doing that, too, with what I'm doing um, going forward. So you're going to be seeing a lot more creative output from me on this channel. I'm, I'm honestly just going to announce it and stuff. It's not going to be, you know, you're going to see crazy stuff in terms of um, videos. Maybe you will. Who knows? But yeah, in terms of just announcing it, I'll announce it on here, obviously. I'll announce it on my podcast so you can check it out as well. So um, be, be on the lookout for zines coming from me. Be on the lookout for prints. Maybe a couple of teas here and there. That'll be available on my store and stuff. And if you want to support the kid, feel free. If you don't, I understand. I understand. <laughs> There's enough nonsense out there instead of me kind of throwing in my flipping two cents in it. I get it. I get it. What else I want to speak about to you today? Oh, and also, what else I do? Yeah, I did that. Um, I bought a bicycle. That's another thing. I finally got a bike. I've got a little single speed um, fixie bike thing that's got, you know, it's got a flip flop hub on the back so you can you know make it into a single speed make it into a fixed gear obviously i'm riding it as a single speed because i've been without riding a bike in a long long time so the fact that i'm riding single speed is already taxing as it is especially given my current weight um <laughs> limitations or my current weight predicament so um but the whole plan with that is obviously to be able to do my two workouts a day is my two a day workouts it'll be great just to have a bike because the bike i can just have an excuse to jump on it put on a mix and ride for 40 minutes half an hour and then come back home do you know what I mean as opposed to like oh I have to go out put my running shoes on and run don't get me wrong there are days I need to run anyway regardless but if I am working if I'm working out Monday to Friday like I usually do sometimes Monday to Saturday it's great to have the ability to also have the bike that I can take out in the evening just to quickly get some other cardio in because sometimes in the morning I'm usually doing weight training I'm usually doing stuff yeah basically weight training kind of wood workouts where I'm doing maybe body weight movements and stuff you know I don't need the bicycle for that but if I can just have a separate cardio thing that doesn't involve running that's a bit more taxing um that, that might you know it that might affect me in terms of me being able to go and run the next day this is the way forward so I'm really, really looking forward to that um so i'm happy with that um, i was able to buy that as well over the weekend so that was already done really quickly um it was funny as well going and cycling around london because i've not done it in a while you know i used to cycle all the time i was a freak who used to cycle from you know let's say east london all the way to west london in black where what area did i used to work in oh what was it let's say like um shepherd's bush area I used to cycle back and forth like every day. And that's no wonder I was, you know, I looked like a flipping um, St. Laurent Hedy Slimane model back then because I was basically cycling, if I'm not mistaken at the time, I think I calculated it. It must have been like, was it six miles? I think it might be, I think it was like a half marathon a day I was cycling. So it might have been like six or seven miles, you know, either way, which is about 13 miles, say 14 miles each day I was cycling back and forth to work, which is about a half marathon a day, which is nuts to think about it. And, um, you know, obviously, 
you know, cycling that distance, me being the oily man that I am, I would be drenched in sweat. I'd have to bring a different set of clothes and change. That's the only thing that was annoying when you commute to work, especially someone like myself who's very competitive when I cycle. So I get into little, you know, I get into little races and psychological warfare with strangers that don't really know you even exist. But it's, it's super humbling nowadays because back in the day, it would be humbling when you try and overtake somebody that's got like a regular road bike with gears on it and it just start clicking and start lapping you without even moving their feet too tough. But now the most embarrassing people, the, the ones that leave you to dust is uh, the couriers and the drivers for like Uber Eats, you know, Justy, Deliveroo, Gitter, whatever that thing is. They got their little electric bicycles and they just like scoot past you so fast. You never, the only times you feel really slow on a bicycle is when the wind is blowing, you know, in your direction and you're kind of trying to fight through it. You feel like, you know, you feel horrible, like you're sacking in mud. And you also feel really slow when somebody is on a faster bike than you or they've got an electric bike, an e-bike. It's like, oh my God, you cunt. Do you know what I mean? They're just zipping past you super super fast so that's usually quite annoying but um yeah i enjoyed it it's great to be back on the bike again but to get to get my heart rate back up again and who knows in a weird way it doesn't really make sense because you know allergies you're at you're outdoors but maybe being outdoors often like an hour a day basically cycling will allow my sinuses to heal somewhat because obviously now i've been good to I've been really, really good and well-behaved. Look, I even went and got my asthma pump redone. I've got my prescription done on my asthma pump. I've got my flipping anti-allergy tablets that I'm taking twice a day and whatnot. Say one a day, but I'm doing two. I've got my B12 vitamins that I'm taking too. I'm doing everything possible to make sure every day that I'm kind of making sure that my allergies aren't getting the best of me. But when they do, sometimes it makes me feel like, you know what, I'm not outdoors enough as I used to be. You know, I was always outside, like whether it was going out, whether it was skateboarding, playing football, I was always out, out, out. And I guess with the pandemic as well, and just generally, even before, I'm not blaming the pandemic, I didn't mean a pandemic guy, just my overall laziness to go outdoors when it's not an event, I've tended not to just be around, you know? Like, and maybe because we're kind of getting older, you don't really tend to just be outdoors just for the sake of it. But back in the day, I used to be outdoors for the sake of it. I would just be in Brick Lane, just hanging around. And you're hanging around, you're walking around, you're getting some fresh air in your lungs, you know what I mean? You're just moving. Whereas nowadays, I'm just a little bit dormant when I'm not in the gym, when I'm not, you know, doing a mix at flipping pirate studios, when I'm not visiting my parents and stuff, I'm back at my home. Or if I'm not in a club at my home, it's pretty easy to find me. Do you know what I mean? I'm a pretty predictable in that way. So that makes it difficult. But yeah, bike, I'm super happy. And then to make the bike purchase even better, I had to go get some gloves, obviously, to make sure that I'm, you know, strapped and ready to go because I love wearing a good pair of gloves for my bike. At the moment, I'm actually thinking or hoping and waiting to get the the gloves that Supreme uh, showed in their recent preview. I want to get a pair of those, but they're not out yet. I think they might be out this week or the following week. I remember I, heard, I, re I, remember I saw somebody or one of those pages, those kind of like Supreme Drop pages say they was going to drop soon. But anyway, in the meantime, I did go out and get myself a pair of mechanic gloves to wear when I cycle, you know, nice and trendy looking, you know, the vibes. I'm a fan most of the Franklin batting gloves. I used to wear those often when I used to cycle before when I had like my 26 inch BMX that I used to ride, my um, charge stove. I'm not sure if you guys remember the brand charge. I used to make, I don't know if they're still around. They made really cool bikes um, and they used to make fixies and stuff. And they had this really cool, like a uh, big BMX, like an MTB um, that I used to always ride back from to work and stuff. Had like neon grips. Like, I love that bike, man. But unfortunately that bike got, um, it got, I wouldn't say it got stolen from me, but it, let's say it went missing. It just went missing. So that since then I haven't had a new one. Um, but that was one of my bikes that I kind of cherished. I actually went to get a 29 inch BMX. I think I've spoken about it already before on the podcast, but ones I went to get, but yeah, I've got these. So I've got these mechanic gloves, right? But the plan is to get these Franklin batting gloves. Cause these are the ones I used to actually wear. I used to have like, I don't know, four pairs of these i bought on ebay from random people but for some reason again me and not completely keeping stuff safe i lost all four pairs i had like an all black pair purple i had a pair with white and then a grayish i think or a yellow pair and i lost them all but to be fair i think the reason why also i lost them all because i remember the quality was quite crap on them even though i bought even i paid for quite a bit to get them imported from the states and this was before they were a trendy brand 
I remember I imported a couple of those gloves in and they, they fell apart pretty quickly, but they were really good, these Franklin batting gloves. I think per in general, I'd imagine, you know, gloves like these, um, the gloves they wear in the NFL, what know if you're a receiver or whatnot, or it, do you, why do you have a receiver? I don't know, whoever wears gloves in the NFL, I would assume those are always really clever, quite good gloves to get instead of actually getting specific cycling gloves, maybe getting gloves where people have to maybe, you know, hold some sort of cylinder c- cylindery cylindery whatever object in their hand might be a best way to go about it so you know even using mechanic gloves are mechanic gloves and maybe they're worn by mountain bikers and stuff that's a bit more sturdy than a fixed gear they will do pretty well and then i think also those um franklin batting gloves that are on the screen now would also do pretty decent so when these come out i'm definitely gonna go get a pair and of course you know definitely tr- gonna try and get the black and the reds um straight up because you know white gloves on me knowing how grubby i can get it's not, not the best idea they'll end up looking like brown gloves pretty quickly but yeah those are definitely what i'm going to go get going forward for that one so i'm looking forward to that that's my bike life on that one and then it's been a while since i've actually purchased anything from the supreme store usually when i get stuff on there when i get stuff from the collection i usually always buy it on resale because i guess it's stuff that everyone 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 else wants um or it's older stuff that i might find on ebay but this time around i thought why not buy a bag just so i can kind of have something to kind of use when i go and dj sometime even though so far the gigs have still been absolutely dry <laughs> in that regard i still went to have like a little bag that i could use where i could chuck in my headphones chuck my usbs in there cables you know periphery devices whatever i need to put in there and i've mentioned it before i think on the pod that um patter bag that they have right remember i think i mentioned it before the patter dj bag i think they've got a new one now they've had one in gray they had one in black so before but now they've got one in gray oh i might have to get this actually it's still in stock nice to see and they got it in black too no way they've got it in black okay let me get up on the screen first so i'm not wasting any of your time so this is the site, the pattern of sound system, utility, DJ bag. Let me just write here and see if they've got other colors of it, if it's just that one. Oh, no, they've got two. It's black in stock. They've got the black back in stock, it looks like. Interesting. Okay. So anyway, yeah. So that the plan was to go get another DJ bag um, that I could use, because at the moment, my uh, Places and Faces bag that I usually was using is a bit busted this one here is a little bit busted and it's kind of gone to shit you know it's not it's not in its best condition in the world don't get me wrong but it's held me down for quite a long time i need to get something different i could use to kind of throw my headphones in you know these my phonons whatever right and my usb sticks and you know whatever else i use when i go out and about and this dj bag was pretty decent in terms of the shape the compartments the zip you know um, how sturdy it looked blah de, blah 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 and it was pretty popular when it first dropped um and somehow they've restocked it crazy isn't it our oh, last year's released the, the, the modifier okay cool so i guess they restocked it or maybe they found some lying around or maybe they remade i'm not too sure because i did remember they made this one which is the update to it and it felt like to me that like they updated some bits and pieces on it or am i mistaken maybe they did maybe they did i'm not too sure but anyway regardless the gray and the they've got two they've got like a classic sort of head portal colorway combo one with the gray with the orange on the inside maybe you would say it's an ma1 i'm not too sure but yeah that's a pretty decent dj bag right that's what i went to get so i'll probably end up still getting it but for the time being i thought let me know i know sorry sample what supreme has to sell and i decided to get one it's like a mini side bag but unfortunately it's too small for my headphones i just use it as a normal bag but it's this one here it comes with a free water bottle that i've got over there somewhere a little nag nag naglagen whatever plastic so it's pretty decent value you get a decent little side bag like that and you get a free little water bag with it so it's not too shabby in it right as you can see there's not too shabby but unfortunately the main compartments and whatnot they're just too small to fit in a pair of headphones or whatnot do you know what i mean it's obviously enough to fit in you know a couple of baggies of ket or whatnot whatever else you want to put in there a flip knife some lip gloss some nail polish or your pearl necklace or whatever the kids wear nowadays that's all going to fit in there but in terms of actually having a pair of headphones and whatnot it's not going to fit but i just it's a good reminder to to see how well made these bags are that they put together man. obviously cordura and stuff but the supreme bags are really well made like this is a very well constructed bag like pretty 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 good 
sturdy as hell like this is one of the things that i always keep an eye on whenever i'm like scooping for stuff on like yahoo auctions for like old supreme stuff i'm always looking at the bags always the old bags especially the ones i like you know <sighs> from like 2015 you know and before that that those bags are like some of the best bags honestly the quality is great like even if it's got like seven owners like it's legitimately bulletproof I've had pretty decent ones I've still kept for a long time that really have kind of served me well over the years. So, yeah, just a shame it's too small though at the moment. This one I've got here at the moment, so I'm gonna have to probably get um the messenger bag that they have listed. I think on the site, maybe that might have to be the one that I get. Maybe it's a messenger bag. I think I might have to end up getting. But yeah, this is the I'll show you on the screen. But this is the one I got. This side bag, right? As you can see, it comes with a little free bottle if you want to use that but I, I, I've got my own I just took that one out it's a bit lame having a bottle that you know, it's already lame as it is carrying a supreme bag you know with the logo and stuff on it you know it's a bit cringe so having a bottle that you've been sucking on with your supreme hat on as well with your little what um Matthew Williams swoosh necklace on you just like an absolute done the done I would have done that when I was 18 I've been feeling you know my best self but nowadays nope so most likely I have to get another one which will end up being if I'm not mistaken, it'll end up being one of those. It might be the small messenger bag, but you know, for the bag so far, the bags are amazing in this collection. So so good. The backpack is flipping brilliant. Of course, the backpack in grey. The duffel bag's better as well. So you know, it might be a, a thing of where I just get all of them. But the next one might have to be to get what to be like a DJ bag thing. It might have to be this little small messenger bag. I think that will fit because I'm pretty sure this is a lot more what's the actual milliliters of this the one that i've actually got uh it's meant to be 2.5 liters so let's check that so that small messenger bag which i might get in the same color what, what color do you think i should get it in let's say i got it in the same color what, what what how many liters is that okay yeah nine so yeah this would be way more way uh this would be a uh, more than more than enough to fit my headphones and whatnot in it um, the little messenger bag to put all my things in and whatnot. I think it's got a little Velcro strap on the back as well. So a little Velcro pocket at the back as well to put extra things in. But yeah, that should be more than enough to fit everything in. So it'll be a combination of this probably. I'd get, maybe I'll get another grey or should I get a grey or brown? I don't know. Maybe I'll get a grey or swap it around. I'm not too sure. Don't want to get in a black, of course, because that's boring. Um, and then, of course, maybe change it and get that. Yeah, so if I get a grey in that pattern utility, bag for the headphones maybe i'll get that in the in the brown just to match this but yeah that's basically what i got and then the other thing i got from supreme was was the photo tee of course you know where is it just yeah one second one second where is it i'll show you are you going to show me or am I going to show you? There we go. Yeah. Yeah, got it. yeah so it's this. It's the Al Green t-shirt. That's what I've got as well. So that one. But, you know, that'll probably wait until the summer to get that out. And in general, you know, I'm not a guy that kind of wears my stuff straight away. I'll, I buy loads of stuff and just leave it in the flipping cupboard. And it's flipping packaging until it needs to be actually worn out or whatnot. But, yeah, Al Green t-shirt as well. That's what I caught. But that's about it, really, isn't it? Al Green, little side bag they sent this as well, which is quite cool. Do you remember this when you were younger? It's these little uh, sweets, these little uh, necklace things that we used to have back in the day. You'd have them. I remember I used to have them as bracelets. Or sometimes if you were if you were a real fag <laughs> and you were really gay for the girl that you loved, or you were really gay for that girl, um, you would give her one of these bracelets or necklaces as like a form of relationship you know love you know adoration whatever it may be um bracelets i wonder if girls thought that was creepy back in the day guys giving them passing them cards of like do you like me yes or no and sending them roses or do you remember back in, the day in school we used to have this thing where we'd have like a section in our school newspaper or magazine i've got or it's like a gazette i don't know what it was like a little thing they used to give to a school um 
I know that sounds like I went to a posh school, but I didn't. Uh, you know, a school, a school in the hood. It wasn't anything posh at all. But uh, because that does sound posh, it? we had like a little gazette that we used to have. But yeah, no, there'll be a section in there, and you'd be able to put down people valentines that you'd that you'd want to, you know, let them know that you know would you be my valentines. And it's always funny because always the the cutest, the cutest guys or girls will obviously get the most like you know. Um, flipping notes in there but sometimes you know ghouls like myself flipping ogres like myself would sometimes get the odd mention here and there but then if you were really trying to be a scrappy guy you just go out and buy you know whoever you'd liked one of these little bracelets and hand it to them or not you know what i mean it's just a little funny thing but yeah this brings back some big big burn memories but yeah that was included and then of course a couple of stickers as well in the packet as well but yeah um and pretty decent, you know, spa shipping from you, your firm, what you call it, firm uh, Supreme. Everything sent via US UPS, if I'm not mistaken. So that was fairly quick. Um, so yeah, big up then from getting that over and done with. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting a Franklin gloves. Hopefully, those will be something that no one else is going to put. Oh, yeah, something I mentioned too. I was able to buy this stuff all without even having to wake up early or anything. I guess my selection is not the greatest and most expensive and most hypey, don't get me wrong, but it's interesting to see how often the stuff hangs around on the site now i know maybe because they've got different locations now and they're probably having to make more of their products to fulfill these different locations i would imagine even you know even though james jb back in the day was ridiculously well known for being super tight about how much they produce and how much they make you know with the investment you're just gonna have to give up something you know you're gonna have to give up the reins or something and you know they're expanding all the time they've got new stores opening up all over the place they probably got more planning to be open soon they're making big hires like you know collaborations coming out of their ass like they're gonna have to be producing more and i think that's why you can go online now and buy stuff without having to like wait or having to wake up at like seven in the morning or I don't know, whatever else we have to do back in the day. You have different tabs open, refreshing stuff, buying stuff on your phone. Like you could just buy it quite easily if you need. But I'm sure some of the normal classic shit like the Camp Cats with the box logo, the box logo hoodies, T-shirts, collaboration stuff, you know, not faces, that will always sell out quickly. But you could probably still buy a lot of it without needing a bot. You can probably, if you've got a decent internet connection, and you know when stuff drops usually you'd be fine i know nowadays they don't do those um back in the day you could cheat it because you could just use the same product description or url they'd use on the you remember that thing that was a little hack on supreme you could basically use i think the url of or yeah of whatever the, the the item was listed at in this preview you could paste that in and then when it dropped it could you know, you can basically put an alert on your Chrome that could let you know when it dropped or something, you know, something along the lines. I'm not sure if I'm explaining it well, but nowadays, if I'm not mistaken, it's a bit harder because the URLs are just random letters. It's not, it's not something you could easily sort of like um, hack and figure out. But yeah, still decent buying experience. It's still, it's still weird though because even though I'm, I've kind of grown over, I've kind of, kind of not grown out of the brand, but you know, I'm into, I'm, I buy loads of other stuff now, but still because Supreme was my my first supreme the hundreds do see what i can think of supreme hundreds do see maybe even obey i would say as in my yeah no let's say my first introduction to actual streetwear was like supreme the hundreds obey stussy um the fresh jive mighty healthy and diamond and co supply yeah diamond supply and co like those six seven brands were legitimately my introduction to streetwear they kind of you know informed all of my interest at that early age and kind of opened a whole new world to me and exposed me to all the different people i traveled the world of that and it really i owe a lot to streetwear that's why I'm, i fiercely defend it which is why it's funny even now my grown age i still get excited when stuff like this drops or comes in you know what i mean when i put an order through i get an update when it's coming like it still feels you a little butterfly it's like oh my god i can't believe it's coming it's coming it's coming it's a bit it's a bit gay but you know i love it I love it still. Cannot lie. Um, let's move on quickly. What I want to talk about here? Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> this, this is courtesy of GQ. Obviously, most of you are aware that Kanye West's next or new album, Donda Two, only came out on the stem player. Something that he 
basically built in collaboration with another design or technology company that was already producing something similar and he wanted to basically you know do the carniest thing and explore some new avenues in order to get music into people's ears pockets hands whatever it may be and maybe change the experience of it and judging by how he presents his shows in terms of fashion and whatnot and the shoes even everything right it makes sense that it's a bit more of a tactile experience right the whole stem play thing where you can kind of you know um, remove parts of the song you can edit it on the fly it's all kind of it lives within your hand there's no there's no um there's no text on it it's all kind of meant to be intuitive you know it kind of makes sense of his design philosophy but just having to go through the rigmarole of having to buy a new player to only listen to Kanye West's album is a bit of a piss take I mean you're having to pay $200 to listen to an album on a player that only can play what stuff that is permitted from the stem player side I don't know how they're gonna you know how you basically transfer files or whatnot um, I'm assuming there's some sort of app I'm assuming there's some sort of app, something that you use it just feels like a bit of a piss take it feels like a little bit of an unnecessary cash grab but I guess if you are Kanye and you're looking at the bigger picture in terms of changing the way the music industry works and functions and how artists get paid maybe it's a better to go about it if to anything it's just it's not dissimilar to what Nipsey Hussle did with his album back in the day or what Wu-Tang Clan did with that album that they sold to the dude that's in prison at the moment now um there are there are ways you can go about to do that if your fans are really engaged and invested in you I know like Griselda do you know they, they are they do loads of that sort of stuff where they basically do a lot of kind of we've got a higher tier of support if you're a fan and you want to get you know maybe some stuff that wasn't on the album only for you I don't know they do those kind of things so maybe this is just a different way of kind of encapsulating or, or kind of showing it symbolically by just having this player um because legitimately officially this album isn't out is it on any other digital streaming platform i don't know if that counts if it's not out i don't know but anyway this is courtesy of gq it says the co-creator of yay's stem player explains why it's a revolutionary device do 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 just a quick one does anybody here that's a kanye fan do you actually say yay or do you say kanye i just say kanye i think this whole yay thing is a bit it's, it's a bit lame personally i understand the artist formerly known as thing cool but you know Prince existed. Like we don't. Yeah, you know I mean, like, it's a bit lame. Like your name's Kanye West. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> It says here, just because Kanye West mostly stopped using all caps on his Instagram um, captions doesn't mean he intends to make the release of Donna to any less noisy. Last Thursday, Ye announced a new album will not be available on your streaming service, nor Amazon, Tidal, or Spotify. Imagine Kanye having his album on Amazon. Come on, Jesus. Uh, most contentiously, not Apple, which West says offered him $100 million that he turned down. It's not clear what $100 million was exactly for, though it's worth noting Apple Music has exclusive streaming rights to last year's Donda streaming parties, which set streaming records for the platform. I can believe that. I'm still, maybe this is the point not to be made here. I'm still quite surprised Apple haven't really made a real big push or a real big move to really solidify their position when it comes to like the podcasting side of things or even maybe even live streaming side of things because I don't, you know, do they have a live streaming platform or is it something that's only plugged in or available for people who have a music account? Is it something that only certain people can get? I don't know. But it's really a shame that even though Apple kind of, I won't say they created, but they kind of popularized the way or method of listening to a podcast, right? Because it was always available through iTunes or whatnot. Um, I don't know if that's right in terms of naming, but it seems like Spotify has stolen the march on them, especially when it comes to the Joe Rogan acquisition, right? Uh, or licensing deal. But Apple have made absolutely, maybe they haven't made some effort I haven't seen, but it doesn't mean, I don't feel like they've made like a real big, like, you know, um, splash like saying hey we're serious about this and we want to reclaim our spot and remind people that we're the number one destination for podcasts but i guess they don't need to because everyone basically has their show on apple unless you have an exclusive deal with like a serious or like a you know spotify or whatnot even then you might have still like a kind of clips channel to upload some stuff on there but everyone that has a podcast basically has a listen on apple in some way shape or form so maybe they don't need to but i'm actually surprised they haven't done anything along that kind of lines but 100 million wouldn't surprise me because you know i'm sure they're, they're raking all that back in especially when it comes to ads and and whatnot um driving this decision is the idea of ownership 
So a recent theme in West every revolving mission statement. Yeah, kicked off February by announcing the Black Future Month, a rebound, the annual observance of the field's is antiquated way of honoring black community. This month you also hosted a brunch, prominent black supporters is certainly the do. But the end game here isn't West's own version of a digital streaming service. Nothing Yay has ever done is quite obvious. Instead, Donda 2 would only be available on the pocket size, literally rocks inspired device called the Stem Player, which first dropped alongside the original Donda last fall. Let's people manipulate songs by isolating elements allowing them to be sped up slowed down reverse and even looped the only thing i don't like about this which i have to be a slightly i won't say contrarian but a little bit against the gain against the gain against the grain about this i think most i think the idea that most kanye west fans are like you know secret designers or like you know in you know whatever people in that kind of way or musicians or whatnot is, is ridiculous it's the same way as like you know if joe rogan thinks legitimately that everyone listens to him wants to do jujitsu no people want to listen to you talk about jujitsu and they get enthusiastic or happy when you sound happy but mostly they listen to you just for pure entertainment and because you occupy you know three or four hours of their day per day or whatever how many times you drop your podcast you give people that they are really interested in they like you as a person but they generally don't give a shit about comedy i don't think or they give a shit about jujitsu or they give a shit about mma not really they just like you as a person and i think the same thing when it comes to kanye they like kanye's music they want to listen to his album or listen to his tunes they want to go to his concerts but i don't think they're really that invested when it comes to taking part and standing for the rights of musicians and and it's even weirder too when it comes to kanye because it always again me being a fan it's just difficult to really but i guess that's why his superpower is somehow even though he's a multi-billionaire legit multi-billionaire he somehow gets people to care about his battle with the industries and his financial struggles and stuff like why should we care when you're like you know when you're set when you're all right why do we actually care in that regard especially when for the most part we've witnessed him win on every occasion every time he gets told no he always finds a way to basically prove everybody wrong legitimately we've never seen Kanye really take an L unless you know the only way he was even take a L really has been the whole Kim thing right um and again we don't know the full details but in terms of just what we can see that's the only kind of really L we've seen him actually take especially when it comes to public perception and what you know I'm sure he doesn't care about that but that's all we've basically seen but somehow he gets us to feel invested in this kind of fight against the industry and all this stuff and rewriting the rules and for the most part we all know deep down that's not going to change right the music industry is a corrupt industry that's never going to change because you know there's too many people benefiting from how corrupt and backwards it is um from from the time I saw Joe Budden again, bad example, but from the time I saw Joe Budden fuck over Rory and Mole, I knew that the music industry is broken. Because Joe, if there's one person who's been absolutely, you know, who's seen the darkest darkest alleyways when it comes to the music industry, it's definitely Joe Budden. Even though lots of it was self inflicted, he still has seen some dark stuff. He's been around dark shit, especially considering his age. He's kind of seen through. He's kind of been in every kind of popping sort of uh, era you know when it comes to music and the industry and business and whatnot still with all that being said he still found a way to fuck up his friends even though he's gone through all that stuff you'd imagine he kind of would go out of his way to make sure his friends would never have experienced what he experienced but he did so if that's the case that leads me to believe the corruptions run so deep that when it happens to you even though you don't want to you kind of secretly hope that you can do it to somebody else so that they can feel the pain you felt do you know what i mean so i don't think this little stem player is really going to change anything when it comes to music industry stuff i don't think so just just the other day kanye was tweeting pictures of his fucking contract to get you know to put pressure on whoever the powers that be to get him out of the deal that he was on I'm not sure if it was def jam or no it was so if kanye west can be in a bad deal if kanye west has a bad fugazi deal kanye west has a bad deal then lord you know lord grant the kids coming up grace and you know uh discernment because if he could get fucked over you've got no chance so i don't think the stem plate's going to change anything personally but hey who knows in nature and tech companies are racing to scoop up real estate it says here yeah, the metaverse trying to change the music industry through a physical device would appear a challenge at most okay let's talk about let's talk about the person uh mainly collaboration with client company kano the stem players are supposed to be represent the beginning of a systemic a seismic sort of shift in how not just music but content in general is created distributed and consumed we are ready for a radical break with the existing paradigm but one that brings more people in and speaks to human spirit that we've forgotten client or gq over the phone 
as he was rushing to a flight in Miami. But do people care about that or do they just want to hear the new Kanye West and Future track? I don't know. Do they really want to create? Are they see it? This depends. It depends if you agree with the whole like Gary Vee um, narrative that he pushes, right? Where he says like everyone's an entrepreneur, everyone's got a business, everyone could say. I don't think so. I think some people just want to work, be able to look after their family and chill. Like that's it. And I think they kind of they sometimes they you know they live vicariously through these bigger than life personalities like Gary Vee and his kind of bombastic ways and whatnot. And maybe they'd love to maybe start their own kind of lemonade stand or go and you know and shop in some what you call it uh, go and shop in the market go and go and buy something from the store and resell on eBay. They'd like to flip as well, but you know they've got two kids, they've got a mortgage, they've got a husband. Like there's no time for that. Like legitimately no time for that. So I don't know. This stuff sounds always sounds a bit too airy fairy. It's like um, you know, Lex Freedom and thinking he can change the world with a podcast. It's like, yeah, because all your friends are flipping MIT guys, isn't it? And, you know, whatever, you know, hedge fund managers and people legitimately building rockets just, you know, to make life multiplanetary, like, yeah cool but regular folks they don't think the world's gonna heal with the podcast <laughs> they're bunkered down with the ak-7s in the middle of ukraine mate anyway <clears throat> it says here transparency is just not a feature of clients philosophy is also his philosophy before the stem player Kano was most known for making it easy to build literally see-through computers and now yeah he's fully embraced his ethos on friday in february he posted a screenshot taken of Kano's company slack channel that revealed the most up-to-date sales figures for the stem player in hour by hour detail at the time of his post over six thousand stem players had been sold in the previous 24 hours translating to 1.3 million at sales of 200 per unit that's quite good considering i don't know that that is quite good considering it's a item that no one needed before they the album was dropping and there was no real rush to people to buy it even though there's loads of really cool videos of people remixing songs and stuff using a stem player i didn't see anybody really pining for one before kanye said donda 2 is only going to come out on that thing so the fact that they were able to shift that many just shows the power of kanye and they let he like he can legitimately get people to go to a stadium and see him prance around in a puddle you know, outside of a, of a burned down house with, you know, the, you know, with the, with the production and the music all messed up. And you could also get people to legitimately part with $200 and pay for a, a, a stem player that didn't even have the album on the date it was meant to drop anyway. It's like, God damn it, man. Beast. <clears throat> And it continues here, while some of his fans have inter has interpreted this as a merely a play for the already wealthy beyond imagination West to get even richer, it's also not hard to see the appeal for his perspective on any musician for that matter. To earn the 2.2 million in revenue we made on the first day, the album would have had to stream, would have to steam, what well, stream, sorry, 500 million times. No, come on. To get 2.2 million, you have to stream 500 million times. No wonder these people are dropping deluxe albums and trying to fudge the system and do it. No wonder they're playing these games. Fuck me, that's a lot of streams for only 2.2. Again, 2.2 is not, no, not to scoff at, but 500 million streams. <laughs> Um, he wrote an Instagram caption selling direct to consumer also lets EA own the asset that's even more important to Spotify than money customer data true ahead of the two release okay cool anyway let's go um, what's the conversation that you had with the original intent behind it um, the designer says it's really what I've been looking to build my whole life I fell in love with the Apple products when I was a kid and then somebody destroyed my laptop in front of my eyes someone near and dear to me they cracked my laptop on the concrete floor and I saw it inside of it and all its components and that was the first time it made me realise that this world around us even the magic of digital technology is something that can be constructed and something that can be understood yeah i think <clears throat> sorry i come come through my say fever i had a similar moment in the streetwear or just in my overall philosophy in life when i started getting really into streetwear and i first discovered you know japanese brands especially supreme for the most part i started reading up on every interview i could find of anybody affiliated with supreme especially james Jebby, of course the founder and when i found out he was just a regular english dude retailer who was you know as passionate about this thing of, of ours as we are in terms of the scene hip-hop um graffiti or uh, whatever it may be fashion skateboarding that's all it was so just a guy that was passionate about the thing he went out there he saw he saw a gap in the market he thought skatewear wasn't really being presented in this kind of bestest form or it given the best platform to kind of really show how amazing it was and then he basically wanted to put you know supreme on the same level as chanel <clears throat> 
or take the ethos of Chanel store, be able to kind of apply that in the Supreme store. And he did it. And that's one dude. Right. And at the time you look at James Jebbia as well, it's not like somebody that's incredibly, you know, full of source or whatever, right? It's not somebody you would immediately see on Instagram and think, oh, okay, cool, this guy has all the ideas. But if he could do it, that definitely showed you, okay, cool. Everything we see, even though it's at the time when I was buying it, it was insane. People would basically fly to different countries to go buy it. Aaron Bondroff has that famous story of him getting stranded somewhere and basically using his Supreme hat as a way to kind of get a ticket back home. Crazy shit, right? Like that brand was like crazy, crazy. It's still crazy now, but back then it was crazy. So for me to see that some man just made the idea in his head and figured it out and he can't even skate you know this is back in the day too when people used to like clown you in skate stores and say you couldn't buy a certain thing because you can't do an ollie to get somebody that, that could build a company like that just off the back of an idea because you felt that there's a gap in the market game changer <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that continues realize that yeah that's a great word we realized that we could realize and that's funny you say realize because james terrell was an inspiration and his book called the extraordinary ideas realize so we we iterated on the functionality and we shrunk it down we wanted to be soft and circular more colored with lights that we have to appeal to your senses we wanted to create emotional technology that's also sensory almost sin 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 that's what Pharrell's got, right? That word. I can't even say it. Cinesiac. I remember there was a time when um, I found out Pharrell has that. And I tried to lie and say I had that too. <laughs> anyway, so not to say these uh, black screens, black boxes, squares that we feel information on, but something more that feels like an association with body, something more organic. Ergonomics, sorry. I could definitely see the stem player being used by like live performers a lot more, um, especially when it comes to DJs and all that sort of stuff. Like, I think I remember seeing, and I said before, when I was at Fabric, like being in Fabric and then seeing the DJ's booth from behind, especially when you're inside that little cage and you can see it. It's they've just got basically a row of CDJs and a row of mixers at the bottom, and it's so dark in it that the, all you see is just the illuminating light of the CDJs, right, just blaring off this thing. And it immediately made me think of the Virgil Abloh see-through um, CDs that he made, right? Um, for Pioneer that didn't have any markings or labeling on them. They're just clear and the lights just, and I remember thinking, oh, how do you remember where anything is? But when you're in the environment and you're actually playing and you're in your groove, it's all kind of, it all comes back. It's all kind of uh, second nature. You definitely figure out straight away, okay, this is loop. This is tempo change. This is skip. This is play port. <laughs> You could figure out quite quickly because you're not really looking at the name. You're just looking at the colors. You just remember the colors. You're in the you're in the zone. You know what I mean, like, I could definitely see something like that happening with Pioneer going forward. CDJs where they just got no labeling, no marking, no text, or nothing. It's just plain. And maybe those are just used for like you know festivals or clubs or whatnot. Because I think it gives it a different glow, different warp. I don't know. Anyway, continue. Some inspiration of the photos when the player launched were literal rocks. Said, yeah, for sure. We looked at stress balls. We looked at products that had been designed for people with autism. We looked at video games. Wow. We looked at machines and obviously Kena products were a huge prosperation. We worked very closely with the production engineers on both Jesus as King and Donda to take their sense of the music production and make it handheld and listenable and simple, even for a six-year-old. We rolled out products at the Easy Christian Academies. So the kids were the important co crew design as well. Yes, me da, 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 da. Companies are typically so hush about saying how many units they've, they've sell and how they sell it. He says we were together when we posted that. That's but that's my company. We designed the first ever transparent build your own computer. And my fundamental opinion is that the more we can see together, the more we can be together. True. The more together we'll be. I agree with that one. There's a grand truth that we all have much more in common than we um, than those who obscure the facts would like us to believe. And I like and I think also when people can see how things actually are, they're creativity will rise up and within them people are so much smarter than many of their major media outlets might give them credit for we uh, get talked down to we are divided we get distracted it's all about who's got this who's got that and how they get it it's like no let's like uh just post the numbers and let's see how things work and then it's just going to work better for everyone I agree with that one so this is all ladders up to a unified theme for a goal in some sense i believe so it's also i've also enjoyed working with Kanye and our ability to reach the end conclusion we'll argue we'll go back and forth but it's all just about getting closer to the goal the work comes first and i think transparency simplicity humanity creativity are all four goals that i've always had in work on my team okay those are the four goals he likes transparency simplicity humanity and creativity i like that and i think he has given us tremendous opportunity to work with him to deliver for him his platform that embodies them as well that's one thing he doesn't really get enough credit for in it i think for as much for as much as a dick as Kanye can come across 
in his kind of personal life and his dealings when it comes to him as a creative or as like a businessman you don't really hear a lot of people of course you know big sean says he owes he's owed six million but then you know who knows but for the most part people always have good things to say about him in it really really good things to say about him even the recent little clip i saw of Fabio foreign on dj academy's podcast we mentioned something like oh um yeah kanye's actually doing everything like he's on you know he's rapping he's writing a verse He's uh, talking on the phone to some architect about building, he's designing, he's picking color palettes for Yeezy. He's, like, he's doing it all on the go at the same time. Everything informs everything. And you can kind of feel it with the stuff that he makes. You know what I mean? I definitely don't think he's bluffing in that regard. But everyone he works with always has good things to say about him. They say, yeah, he's a beast. I mean, he's a great person to work with, a great collaborator. Um, you know, he makes you he makes you basically feel like a kid again, you know, because everything is possible, blah, 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 blah. Uh, da, da, da. But yeah. To be clear, do you have to buy the template? Listen to Dollar. Yes, you'll need a template. Listen to Dollar too. Uh, yeah. Say what do you? Yeah, I want to hear what he says here. What would you say to those people who are confused or unhappy about that? He says, "Well, remember, you're not spending two hundred dollars for an album. You're spending two hundred dollars for a revolutionary device that allows you to listen to music." Nah, come on, come on, though, guy. You know, most people don't give a shit about that player. They're only buying it because they want to listen to the music, to listen to the album. Maybe it might turn into one of those things where. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe my turn of things, but I don't know. It's more of a weird thing to say. I wonder, do people are there people out there who ex are there people out there who buy like an Apple laptop just so they can look cool? But then once they buy the Apple laptop for the social credit and for the cool points and whatnot, they then start to get into, I don't know, making tunes on GarageBand, you know, editing videos on iMovie or whatever, whatnot. Is that a thing? All the people just buy them just for the image thing and just they're always on Google Chrome and that's it. They don't actually use any apps, they don't do anything else, just they just use it as a laptop to stream and listen to music. I wonder. But I think most people don't. I think most people buy whatever they're buying for what they're gonna buy it for. They don't just buy it and then suddenly they then become it's like that advert, um, that famous advert about that the dreamers and the creatives that Apple did back in the day. I think if you're creative, you're gonna maybe get drawn to apple products more because you know of the marketing they've done with it and whatnot but it's not as if like you're buying it under the guise that this is going to unlock my creativity it's just like no you think it looks cool people in your industry use it so you want to use it too maybe there's better apps on it for you to use as opposed to using windows machine. i don't know but it's not as if like you buy it under the guise of i'm going to use it to word process and then you suddenly get it like oh my god i'm picasso i don't think so right i don't know maybe i'm wrong but anyway it continues he says, uh, you're spending $200 for a revolutionary device that lets you listen to music in a completely new way through stem separation. And that allows you to mix and make music on the go. But who wants that? Why don't? Why can't I just listen to the track, how you made it, like the experts made it? Because I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not Kanye West. He's meant to be the musical genius. Why can't I listen to the way that he'd done it? Why do I have, why do I have to remix a song? <laughs> and this is it. You're also spending that 200 to become a part of the community. Community, of course, that fucking catch-all, catch catch whole phrase that what is that what's a community a slack channel uh a fucking um a, a discord server that's that's a community come on bruv what changes to, to uh, on top of that you're getting done the two which has enormous value so i think there's a really important thing to stress if i could put one thing from this story today um that i'd want to make clear is that you're getting something revolutionary you're getting a first generation technology product that has the best reviews for a first generation technology product than anything we've seen in a decade maybe since the original iphone yeah don't get me wrong it's a cool thing but I don't know. I think most people are buying it are buying it because they want to listen to Donda 2. If they can't get Donda 2, they're not going to listen to their shit. But yeah, you know, I feel the guy, I think he's very, very inspiring, very, very cool sounding dude anyway, regardless. Um, as a piece of tech, somebody is a bit of a tech um, whore myself, I would definitely buy it just for the sake of it, just to have, but I'm not buying under the guise that, you know, this is some this is really going to change the way that I kind of view the world and music is that no, 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 no. I want to listen to music. I want to listen to music. Like, there was even a time where I was actually thinking about buying an iPod, you know, like an old iPod I used to use back in the day and then just using that as a thing to listen to music with instead of having to use my phone because it's annoying. You know what I mean, just like a standard, standalone 500 gigabyte iPod, whatever, just so I could listen to music because I miss that as well, especially nowadays. Um, I'm sure you could buy peripheries that you could basically stick into headphone jack to make it, you know, Bluetooth connectable. But I just need something, you know. But yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm bugging out. Anyway, 
moving on, moving on, moving on. Quickly went to mention um it has the other day was actually um Matteo Blasi. How is that how you pronounce his name? Matteo Matthew Matthew Blasi's debut at 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 Bottega Veneta the other day. Um during Milan Fashion Week. I thought it was surprised if Milan Fashion Week I thought they would debut it at Paris Fashion Week. I don't know why it's Milan. Is Milan maybe the more businessy side of things get done? I don't know. Someone let me know in the comments why it was at Milan and why it was not at Paris. Um, it might be something just plain and simple. You know, it's a it's an Italian based brand. Maybe that might be the reason why. I don't know. But if we could understand why it's at Milan and not at Paris, Paris being obviously the kind of the Champions League or flipping fashion when it comes to the best designers showing at the time. Um, someone let me know. I'll be very, 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 very much appreciated. But anyway, the show happened the other day and i was really impressed by it number one the set was great i thought the soundtrack was the soundtrack was phenomenal let's just say that the soundtrack was really really good um i've seen a few shows actually this is concluded where they had two angles usually whenever they're filming a fashion show they'll have like the main angle where you know the models kind of walking towards the camera maybe a couple of going on top but they had an angle on this show of the models walking where you saw the side profile which you don't usually see often because obviously most fashion shows you just get the classic sort of front on profile and a lot of i find a lot of kind of the real kind of wow bits in kind of fashion especially when it comes to like runway stuff is usually found in the shapes of stuff especially if you're watching it on the screen you can't obviously tell quality as uh, supposedly this first look um this pair the first one that came down the runway was like a white uh a white vest top with some blue jeans right classic kind of style and supposedly these blue jeans aren't, aren't actually jeans they're leather but obviously when you're watching a show on your laptop on your phone it's impossible to tell what the materials are where it feels like blah blah, blah. but i do feel like sometimes if they were able just to give you the idea the, the angle on the side just see the shapes it really kind of kind of let you see the the, the collection in a whole different way because usually i found especially when it comes to stuff like you know let's for instance like one of my favorite brands at the moment balenciaga um designed by them or even vetmo right the old stuff a lot of the really great amazing thing about that stuff was when you put it on the shape of it how it was cut it kind of you know it felt right you know the kind of shape it was a bump balloon fit it popped out here it cropped there but you miss those deals if you just see the front you know you just see it flat on you kind of missed how the shape is especially because a lot of designers have really clever shapes how they cut things do you know what i mean rick owens is a good example of that margella does really good cuts and stuff like so i was happy to see those kind of weird angles on the side but yeah um get into the collection itself let's actually view the collection here on the slideshow I thought it was a good debut. I'm not going to lie. A lot of looks, 70 looks. Maybe if I was being super critical, I'd say maybe too many looks for a debut collection under a new designer or under a new creative director's um, tutelage. Maybe kind of, you know, pare it down a bit. But of course, you want to basically, you know, stamp your... Um, you want to basically put your, your 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 flag in the ground in some way, shape or form and offer up as many... Um, iterations or examples of what your vision is for the brand going forward and one thing we definitely saw was the Bottega Veneta green basically disappeared I don't think I saw one iteration maybe a couple of bits here and there but for the most part Bottega Veneta green was gone um I didn't see much um what did what did Brian Boy say I didn't see a lot of pandering to blacks as he likes to say um I saw a very kind of diverse cast but nothing too overly heavy-handed um even the front row everything was really tastefully done i think for the most part it wasn't slapstick you know what i mean didn't just slap fucking um you know jay huss in the middle of the runway just to kind of appease the blacks and whatnot it was just like a standard kind of runway i like that um the, the and again i thought the casting was really well done without kind of standing out that they've kind of taking kind of um quotas and whatnot <laughs> um and what else is it oh and also overall in terms of the options available in terms of the quality and whatever is available i think i mentioned it the other day on twitter it was very much like the old bottega under daniel lee but it was very much new bottega right if that makes sense which makes me believe that maybe this matteo blasi guy who you know whenever when it was announced that daniel lee was going to get fired or left whatever happened when he you know when he referred to um somebody in the meeting as a uh, you know the n-word uh or as joe rogan likes to say niggas. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah um when that was when that was made known i do remember a lot of fashion insiders who i follow on 
you know, high fashion Twitter and whatnot, they were really excited that Matteo Blasi might be taking over. Because I guess, you know, if you're more plugged in than I am behind the scenes and with who works where, because, you know, I think I know a lot about fashion in terms of front facing, in terms of what everyone sees, but in terms of the intricacies of who works where and who's a design assistant there, who's an accessory designer there, I don't really know much about that stuff. But a lot of the people I follow on Twitter do. And they were really excited when Matteo Blasi's name was being floated as a designer. So maybe it was always known among amongst the in the know people that Matteo Blasi was actually the guy responsible for a lot of the kind of greatest hits from Balintz from sorry from Bottega Veneta during Daniel Lee's tutelage uh, I think someone mentioned on my Twitter that he might have been responsible for that really nice sort of like patterned I don't sure if it's like even knitted or quilted or crochet whatever it is that really nice print that I think Skepta wore as well it's like an all-in-one suit it comes like a jacket and trousers he was responsible for that really nice blue that happened there um maybe someone mentioned the lug boot he might be responsible for but again who knows but it did make me wonder that maybe the Daniel Lee kind of influence and stuff was a little bit overinflated and I do remember somebody else mentioning too I forgot it was or some lady I don't know who the lady was some lady I think mentioned when Daniel Lee was kind of getting fired or on the way to go or did go that you know the actual nice guy there who worked there was actual Matteo and Daniel Lee maybe had let the kind of fame get to his head a little bit and was not the nicest guy behind the scenes that doesn't really matter but in terms of the quality of the garments this looks way more familiar to me this looks way more similar to Daniel Lee's first collection than Daniel Lee's last collection looked. You know what I mean? Like that first, first collection that dropped, that was fire. Do you remember that first collection? Like it looked like flipping gladiatorial wear. Do you know what I mean? It was really a real big statement. Like he came out, he came out of the blocks fast on that one. Let me see if I can get it up on here. I'll show you. It was like outside somewhere. Where was it? Is that the one there? That's the one, yeah, this one. Fall 2019. That, okay, maybe the first one was this, pre-4 2019. So Daniel Lee maybe have started there, but I remember this was the first time that I remember noticing Bottega Veneta under Daniel Lee's tutelage, right? And for noticing them, I think, okay, cool, there's so many things in this collection that I would instantly buy. And I really got a lot of this early first collection vibes from the new... Um, what you call it for 2020 collection not sure if you guys can follow or make this make sense i don't know hopefully it does but yeah this first collection that daniel lee did or the one that i noticed first you know it looks very very similar to what not very similar but in terms of the feel the aesthetic sort of it kind of feels very similar to what we saw can yeah somebody's looks like fucking phenomenal not sure if a lot of this stuff actually made it to store i'm not really too sure to be honest but this was really really good really good man for winter 2019 race where Bottega and I think the new collection kind of had a lot of that kind of similar vibe to it it really did for me personally anyway loads of great shapes loads of good colors again no really you know a real kind of reduction of that Bottega and bottle green or pine green whatever that green color is um, a lot of navies a lot of blacks yeah that's the second angle that I said looks great you get a really good um view on all these great little pieces you get the cut of the sleeve on that you know the way the cut the jacket is on there the, the 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 pant length you got these high heel mary janes like it looks so much better by this angle right do you know what i mean like it actually comes alive that entire look <laughs> again the same things happen there same thing kind of happens there it looks like they've got like an an update on the lug boot I'm not sure if it's the same it looks kind of thinner to me you know it looks like it looks a little bit shit the boot anyway because it reminds me kind of similar to when but uh balenciaga stopped making the the flipping um triple s shoe in italy and started making it in china and the quality diminished somewhat a little bit or the little bit of the punchiness went out of it this kind of looks similar i'm not sure if it's been thinned out a bit on the sole but it looks a tiny bit thinner maybe it's maybe it's just my eyes i'm not really too sure but yeah really great looks man look, look at these little fluffy heel joints super super good and i'm i think i over I, I quickly checked in um to a show studio panel discussion where they're talking about this stuff and i don't understand i think maybe maybe because i'm i don't know 
I'm not plugged in too much, but I always find it interesting and weird how like fashion insiders can't necessarily see stuff from a consumer point of view at all. I think a few of them were like saying, oh, there's not a lot of stuff in this collection that is immediately kind of like jumps out at you as kind of like um, something buyers will be all over or like consumers of life when it comes to the shop. It's like there's loads of things in here that people would buy that, that those bags that slinged over the shoulder would definitely be something I'm seeing a lot of people definitely buying. The boots are going to be an easy buy. These boots with the flipping fishnet type things all over them are going to be an easy buy. There's so many things here that are going to be like this skirt. You're going to see plenty of editors wearing this in the next couple of seasons for street star picks here and there. Let's not, you know, look at those heels even have tread on the bottom of the loader here. Like there's plenty of stuff on this collection that is instantly going to be um, snapped up by people. They're going to want that bag, the boots. Come on. There's so many things here. But that panel discussion or that, that panel on the show studio just said, no, nah, there's not a lot of stuff here that's um, jumping out in terms of being viable or like stuff that people would be hyped on. But I think there's many, many, many things here. But again, as a, as a debut, I was a big fan of it. Um, I loved everything about it personally. There's a couple of looks that were a bit dodge that I wasn't really too keen on. I think one of the, I think it's a dress with like a jumper tied around the waist was a bit weird in terms of styling. But, you know, as a first introduction back to the scene under his yeah, this is the one this kind of look 43 with the jumper around the waist I don't know what that's about that's a bit of a weird one but I guess over time you'll find his voice again maybe you know we'll see a lot in some of the editorials and whatnot and campaign pictures um, maybe he'll kind of run through a couple of stylists first and you know until he finds his match but overall I like it man I think there's a lot of great stuff in here like that coat like come on man that coast got flipping Anna De La Rosa all over it, bro. Come on. This is going to be super popular. Yeah, for sure. I see a lot of people here. This is this styling tip with the jumper around the waist of the dress. is like, what is this? Someone tell me, please. What is that? Um, yeah, loads of good stuff in the collection. I loved it. I thought it was a really great debut. <clears throat> Interesting also that there's been little to no mention since... Um, the bombshell revelation that that guy made about um, Daniel Lee allegedly saying the n-word at a meeting which kind of caused him to lose his job allegedly no real development on that or insight I guess we'll never really find out really and it would just be one of those things that we kind of just you know it's like um we're never we're never going to find out why flipping um Anna De La Russo and what's her name and uh Kareem Roy no Kareem Royfield and um Emmanuel and Alt fell out we'll never know why that original Vogue Paris team fell out the original dream team We'll never find out about that. So same thing maybe happens with um with this uh particular net thing. But yeah, some greens here and there, do you know what I mean? But still still the classic bottle green. But yeah, it gives me a lot of the early vibes. But yeah, big up Daniel Lee. <coughs> sorry, big sorry. <coughs> big up Mateo Blasi. Sorry, my voice, man. Fucking no, I'm hay fever. Big up him. Um great debut collection. I think um I'm eager to see more stuff. I'm eager to see what he does with video, what he does with again photography, what styles he picks. Um I'm eager to see who he picks as the muse, who's gonna be wearing it head to toe nowadays, how it's gonna be spoken about, presented in the store. And loads of really interesting things are gonna be um kind of, you know are in the pipeline in the future that are going to maybe have a really big impact on how the brand is perceived and how it eventually does in the store. But I think Daniel Lee did enough good work in the beginning or they did enough good work in the beginning to have a, it be cemented with the cool kids. So they'll have a bit of grace. So even if the cool kids don't like it, <coughs> they'll still give them a couple of collections or him to get it right. And then when Mateo gets his feet, you know, he's feet under the table and he kind of gets settled he'll be fine and then i think people will be back into it uh, but i think it's got enough core cool points to survive so far really despite people being maybe a bit lukewarm to the collection but i liked it man i really really did like it i thought it was i thought it was a really good debut um like again i'm really image really curious to see what the campaigns end up looking like let's see what there's a quote here from him precisely about the collection he says uh, this question is basically a journal so the idea is to bring back energy and silhouette that really express motion because Bottega is a big company so you go somewhere you don't stay home this question basically is a journey there's many characters they all have places to go they feel quite free yep I, I got that from that collection I'm not gonna lie the study of pictures da, da, da. what else have a quote you say here level of success been da, 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 up to the new kind of bank okay cool then nothing else he said there's a quote from him but yeah i liked it man i thought it was a really good collection i'm not going to lie i really really liked it it's crazy isn't it that first look is not even fucking gene this lever mad isn't it mad 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 but yeah big up him 
big up him we move on from that one then we want to speak about oh uh, yeah let's talk about this moving on to the um well another topic i want to talk about concerning Kanye West is this announcement that the yeezy gap engineered by blizz yoga collection is well we've got an i we've got an idea what it looks like and i'm not sure if it's all out at the moment but we've got an idea what it looks like and it's, as you expect whatever we've been seeing Kanye wearing head to toe nowadays is basically what he's basically you know proposed as his kind of um silhouette as his outfit as his or well, not outfit as his silhouette as his outfit as his um what you call it what's that word called and it's wardrobe it's wardrobe staples because i always got the feeling that gap collection with kanye or the, the, the yeezy gap collection originally was always based upon wardrobe staples like okay i'm gonna make the perfect because he kept, he kept mentioning all those hiring interviews a perfect hoodie um you know, spent many many hours doing it he treated it like a basically a piece of couture like you know refining it refining it, refining it to the point where he'd get it you know the perfect hoodie and then mass market it right which would basically be the the point of you know, that be the, the kind of the the pinnacle of great design be able to make something that's legitimately the best in class but then able to disseminate it you know to everybody to use easily like a flipping really good calculator for instance so i thought that was a really noble or great idea to go with and then it's interesting because if i'm not mistaken the early team involved um the girl from uh Maui lola right but then I don't know what happened there. Does anybody know? If anybody got any information regarding that, well, I'd really like to know what happened with her. Did she just leave because it wasn't, it was taking too long to put together? <coughs> was she get, did she get fired? That was strange because I thought that marriage would have been really cool to have seen how she could basically take her vision from her brand and kind of, you know, marry it next to what Kanye was doing at Yeezy, working under his tutelage or working with him with lock and step. I don't really know what happened there, but it didn't really work out. Anyway, it didn't work out. Then suddenly um, Demna popped out out of nowhere and they decided to work together, which maybe made a lot more sense in terms of um, Kanye actually being a fan of the brand. Like he actually wears uh you know balenciaga and he's worn some vetamon pieces head to toe all the time he's always in the store he legitimately enjoys the brand he's talking about you know i think he mentioned in a couple of interviews that he wants to have his own in store in store where he has basically a little selection of his favorite pieces that he pulls from every collection which i think they started doing online actually which is an easy win they'd have like a little url i think i remember we've seen somewhere there like a little url where you can basically shop kanye's picks from balenciaga which is you know for all the kind of you know bandwagon follower people out there that love to just wear whatever he wears easy easy way to go about things but anyway there's a question of uh, gq it says first look the easy gap engineer collection by uh, the, the first look easy gap engineer by balenciaga collection it says uh yeah calling it hacking a creative exchange or like long-time collaborators Kanye and Balenciaga the Demna are uh, it's called engineering whatever you call it the next eight Yeezy Gap pizza are set to drop today at Yeezy Gap and Farfetch after a countdown time on the former consumer set the clock to Tuesday they look like Gap remade for dystopia the collection is in line with only two well is is in line with only two Gap pieces Kanye has released so far the successful bulbous waxy round jacket and the cropped perfect hoodie out for the most part logos and branding in shapes materials silhouettes more recognizable than in than insignia there are hoodies and t-shirts layered over or under ponchos long draping tees and shakets um there's track suits a jumpsuit made of what appears to be a uh, swishish material baggy billowing pants almost everything is cast in black save for a light wash and tattered denim options of course every model in the lookbook is wearing a full face covering prices range from one 120 dollars to 44 dollars 444 it's priced re this is the thing that's embarrassing about it. again i know he's working with gap i get it you know it's mass market blah 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 but the fact that Kanye is able to produce this level of clothing at that price range and some of your favorite streetwear brands can't even sell you a t-shirt for 50 pounds you know it's shocking in it shocking state of affairs these guys get especially some of these guys on twitter and instagram and stuff that sell you a trucker hat for a hundred dollars like are you insane we've all got the same computers we've all got access to alibaba we can all kind of screen print stuff or you know apply diamantes onto a flipping piece of foam it's not hard to do and you want to sell it for a hundred dollars are you insane really are 
That's why I'm happy a lot of those guys have stopped saying for the kids. Remember, that was a big thing people used to say back in the day. I'm doing it for the kids. I'm doing it for the culture. No, you're not. You're doing it for your pockets. Because if it's for the kids, you'd make it affordable. But you're not making it for the kids. You're making it for that maybe that kid who goes to flipping Mr. Nice Guys, whose dad drives a flipping Porsche Jeep or something, or he drives one, right? That's the kid you're making it for. But you're not making it for regular kids. They can't even afford it. Or if they can, they, they can only afford it to resell. So they can buy other stuff but yeah i love it um i think this round jacket is kind of anorak it looks like a round jacket basically the same sort of material with a hood on it instead i love that um i'm a big fan of that i'm not gonna lie is it all unisex as well so i think it's all men's women it's just all standard right then it's got this denim jacket that looks like it's um inspired by like a motorbike jacket it's a bit padded on the on the shoulders classic kind of demna balenciaga sort of riff there as well i love that um He's got a version of his water boots that he's been wearing all the time. I'm not sure if they're going to be part of the collection also, but um, good washing jeans. Love that. Uh, you've got this, a full cat suit with some fire high boots. You've got a uh, another one with some fire high boots with a side bag, which is going to be really popular when that ends up coming out. Um, that jacket again I mentioned. You've got another sort of rainy they, 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 it's obviously giving a lot of serial killer vibes don't get me wrong Jeremy you, know I mean? you, you rock up with this at, the good thing with this with the pandemic it's made this sort of clothing not look that scary I think if this was 2017 2018 2019 people would scream a lot more but nowadays I don't think people really bat an eyelid if you walked into Selfridges wearing this shit I really don't um, maybe I'm wrong I don't think so though. but um, yeah another all in one suit oh we've got a classic Gap hoodie there with the logo actually on it so I guess that one that we saw with the patch over it didn't exist or maybe it's been changed you got some rubbery type pants with again the boots which i'm not really too fond on the gloves i like the jacket i like of course the cut on the hoodie is perfect especially with the t-shirt underneath uh what's continuous here what else they've got here they've got another jacket with the gap logo written on there looks really cool a long coat that i'm gonna be all over is that a coat or a trench maybe it's a poncho it's like a poncho maybe it's a poncho they've got another poncho there for men over drop there they've got one of those bags that you put um that you can basically uh throw into the water that floats and stuff as a backpack another poncho that denim look oh the denim jacket comes in black yeah that's bad that's a bad boy those two looks are really nice especially the jackets i'll be all over those jackets they look really cool uh what else is it let's see the quote here it's a vision come true uh to work with gap and demna the creative the director of balenciaga to make the incredible product available to everybody yay told vogue last month uh the the, the this project allowed me to join forces yeah to create utilitarian fashion for all yeah i like it man i'm, I'm not gonna lie i actually like it i'd wear a lot of the stuff um there's actually a collection here available right this is from earlier i'm not sure if it's all available now maybe it's all been sold out but what was it the pricing wise what, what how much was all this stuff was it all gone the padded denim jacket uh what's it say here padded was 430 not bad in it so it's all gone, I think, at the moment. Join waitlist to get information when it's out. Yep, so it's all gone. But it's really nice, man. Not going to lie, the, the the jeans are nice as well. It's all gone, all sold out. Nothing's available, unfortunately, in all the sizes. But the jeans are how much? 220 for a really good washing jeans. Actually, get back in the day, you should actually make decent jeans and chinos. Back in the day. <coughs> oh, finally got sweatpants with Dude, without the cuff i'm always uh that's one of my fucking biggest pet peeves which is why i love wearing rick owens and you know uh, sweatpants because they usually don't have a cuff at the bottom but i hate wait i hate having sweatpants with elasticated bottoms so anything with like a straight bottom like that him i'm all for it mate all for it but yeah this is even the sweatpants are sold out sweatpants are 180 bargain as well in terms of weight you'd imagine got a t-shirt with a small logo the chest a t-shirt with a classic logo long sleeve t-shirt gap hoodie Oof, all looks really great i'm not going to lie very very fan of it hoodie as well without the drawstrings interesting shape too in the terms of the hood i'm not a fan of the the bird in the back though oh, i could do it out i'm doing it out the bird in the back i'll be completely honest but yeah pretty decent collection all in all I guess if you're that way inclined, you can check it out. Available at um, easygap.com. Let's see if it's refresh. If I can do it, if it happens, nothing happens, right? No, nothing new there. No. 
but yeah looks pretty decent very easy to use site nothing more nothing less on there in it check it out if you're that way inclined um what else did i decide to do i think that might be it in there don't want to keep you guys too long yeah let's leave it there for now let's leave it there for now what's happening in ukraine let's see here um oh yeah let's see yeah of course you've seen this headline haven't you most of you have already seen this putin puts nuclear forces on high alert mate absolute madman vladimir putin has ordered um, russia's military to put his deterrence forces um, which include nuclear weapons on special alert he told the press conference uh, told defense chief sorry it was um because of aggressive statements by the west amid widespread condemnation of his invasion of ukraine the announcement does not mean russia intends to use the weapons of course but you know he's just the same way how he said what was it what did he call the invasion of ukraine anyway like a training exercise or something like that like crazy terms in it the u.s the u.s immediately condemned the decision calling it unacceptable legislation last week mr putin had warned that whoever tries to hinder us in ukraine would see consequences you have never seen your history those words were widely interpreted as signaling a threat to use nuclear weapons in the west stood in this way the warning became sharper on sunday when he ordered the russian defense minister and the chief of military staff to put nuclear deterrent forces on special regime for combat duty absolutely crazy imagine he deciding to flip in launch a nuclear missile because he feels like he's losing the war like, you know what i mean like it was losing ground or losing a face absolute bond villain mate absolute bond villain um but yeah uh big up everybody in ukraine still standing strong still fighting pushing back pushing you know i think the propaganda story came out recently about um supposedly that they've been surrounded in the city kiev and then, um well, the mayor or somebody had to come out and basically say no this was not true um many many things happening there loads of misinformation loads of uh, saboteurs as well they've been catching um you know in there as well it's a flipping crazy situation and I've got the thing, most people are staying and trying to bear arms. They're basically banning people that are from 16 to 8, 60, I think, to go, or 18 to 60 or something, to leave men. They always have to kind of, you know, someone grab a weapon. Guys, you know, regular, I think I saw a story about some IT guy just, you know, never fired a gun in his life and he's bearing arms, you know, to protect his motherland. Like crazy, man. Really cool stuff. Probably stuff you would probably never see here in England. For sure, if something happened like that in England, I think most people would just, you know, would just cower at home. Or would just you know pretend like they, they didn't hear it, <coughs> they didn't hear the call <coughs> to bear arms for sure. But yeah, let's leave it there for now. That is the excellent thing to show episode number five sixty, right? It's five sixty. Thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. It really has. I really enjoyed it. Hope you have too. And if it's your first time, as per usual, why don't you leave me a review on Spotify and whatnot? I'd greatly appreciate that. People like reviews on there. <coughs> If you'd like to listen to more stuff regarding myself that doesn't include me going to her hem, um, then def definitely check out Patreon at patreon.com for just Agostino. I've got a bonus episode I put out there per week. At the end of the week, I put out one bonus episode. So definitely check it out on there. You'll be able to see some, you'll be able to listen to some behind paywall content concerning myself with some more x-rated type topics stuff that i probably won't speak about on my main channel for fear of cancellation you know the vibes so definitely check out the patreon there it's only one dollar the equivalent of one man to subscribe we've already got a little decent little crew over there so anyone else that wants to join feel free to get involved and yeah man like i mentioned at the top of the show many things coming down the pipeline zines prints for update on my photography page and some other bits and pieces so definitely keep an eye out or agasinozinga.com for updates regarding that and of course as usual all the links to contact me are in the description you can find that contact me button in the description to send me an email if you wish and yeah hope to hear from you guys soon see you again soon take care be safe peace